Hey, Dr. McCann here, and this video is on weight reduction medications. We all know how hard it is to lose weight and keep the weight off. And with the release of the weight loss injections, the internet has exploded with people wanting more information. So you have probably come across the term adaptive thermogenesis. And what does this mean? So this is where certain genetic and behavioral factors want your body to store energy, which makes weight maintenance extremely difficult. As a matter of fact, studies show that up to 80% of people who lose weight will return to their original weight percentile secondary to these physiologic counter-regulatory mechanisms. And this is why anti-obesity treatment has become so popular. As a matter of fact, there are several different clinical guidelines to help guide physicians to the appropriate patients and medications um, that can be used to help with obesity. For example, the Society of Endocrinology recommends that everybody with a BMI of greater or equal to 25 need diet, exercise, and behavioral therapy. Medicines or pharmacotherapy can be added if your BMI is greater than 27 with a comorbidity such as high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, or obstructive sleep apnea. And pharmacotherapy can be added if your BMI is greater or equal to 30. So oral medications. First, we're gonna go over Qsemia. Qsemia is a combination of fentramine and what's known as Topamax. The fentramine is a stimulant. It's a scheduled drug and it helps with hunger. The Topamax is used to treat seizures and migraine and it's what the company states helps with cravings. It is FDA approved in adults as well as children beginning at the age of 12. And looking at studies from their website, um, the studies lasted 56 weeks and the group that did only diet and exercise lost three pounds. The group that did diet exercise as well as the medication lost 21 pounds. So some side effects and contraindications. You can't take this medicine if you're pregnant or trying to get pregnant as the Topamax portion has been found to cause an increased risk of cleft lip and cleft palate. The medicine can potentially increase your heart rate. You can have a reduction in height velocity or growth rate from the ages of 12 to 17. There's an increased, can be an increased risk of suicidal thoughts um, or mood disorders like depression or anxiety. It can potentially cause cognitive dysfunction like problems with concentration, memory, and attention. The Topam Topamax component has to be tapered. You can't just stop it because it can potentially have withdrawal symptoms. And again, the fentramine is a stimulant and it does have a low potential for abuse. So next we have Contrave. And Contrave is a combination of naltrexam and bupropion, otherwise known as Wellbutrin. The naltrexone is used to treat opioid and alcohol dependence, while the Wellbutrin component is used to treat depression as well as smoking cessation. In this study, participants had to go to group counseling, they had caloric goals, and were prescribed an exercise regimen. And the study again lasted for 56 weeks. The patients that did not get the medicine that only had the group counseling the exercise and the caloric restrictions lost an average of 16 pounds and the patients that had lifestyle modifications as well as the medication lost an average of 25 pounds. Contraindications or reasons that you should not take this medication is if you have uncontrolled hypertension, if you have a seizure disorder, or if you have chronic opioid use. Possible significant side effects include suicidal thoughts, or seizures. We have Orlistat, and this reduces fat absorption from the gut. This medication can have very bothersome side effects, so its use is a little bit limited, and some of those side effects include increased flatus, fecal urgency, and fecal incontinence. And then for the oral medications, we also have some that are approved for um, only up to 12 weeks. 
um, because they are stimulants and they are scheduled drugs, which means they do have a low to moderate po potential for abuse. Um, the most common that you've heard of is gonna be the Fentramine or the Adipex, but there are a few more available also. So weight loss injections. There are actually three different injections, Saxenda, Wegovy, or GLP-1 analogs, and Terzipatide is the GLP and GIP analog. GLP-1 is made in the intestines in the distal ileum in the colon, and GIP is made in the duodenum and the jejunum. GLP increases insulin secretion by the pancreas, suppresses the appetite center in the brain, and slows gastric emptying, making you not feel hungry. There are GLP receptors also in the heart, increasing cardioprotection, and adipose tissue, and different regions of the CNS, and the studies are ongoing. In contrast to GLP, GIP activates glucagon production, so it might help prevent against hypoglycemia or low blood sugar. GIP also improves triglyceride clearance and increases the sensitivity of adipose tissue to insulin, which may help with abnormal fat deposits. There are three different, three different injections, the Saxenda and the Wegovy, again, are the GLP-1 analogs, and the Terzipatide is the GLP-1 and GIP analogs. The Saxenda was the first GLP-1 analog approved by the FDA, and it's a daily injection. The semaglutide, or Wegovy, um, is also FDA approved, and it's a weekly injection, and the Terzipatide um, is also a weekly injection. So how do these compare? Well, first starting with the GLP-1 analogs, a trial done in 2019 and published in 2022 called the STEP trial, STEP-8 trial, compared the semaglutide recommended dose of 2.4 milligrams weekly um, with Saxenda, the recommended dose of three milligrams daily. And they looked at the percent change in body weight. So, semaglutide had a 15.8% change in body weight reduction versus the Saxenda that had a 6.4% weight reduction. So, the semaglutide was the clear winner of this study, and let's compare that to the terzipatide. So, first, make note that there are no direct trials comparing the semaglutide and the terzipatide for weight loss. However, there is a study called the Surmount 1 trial on the terzipatide for obese or overweight individuals without diabetes. This trial lasted 72 weeks and looked at the percent change in body weight on all, both the 5, 10, and 15 milligram doses. With the results showing their terzipatide 5 milligrams had an average of 15% reduction in body weight, the 10 milligrams had an average of 19.5% body weight reduction, and the 15 milligram had an average of 20.9% body weight reduction. In addition, each group also had participants losing more than 25% body weight. The most people was in the 15 milligram group compared to the 36 participants losing, excuse me, the most people was in the 15 milligram group and they had 36% of participants losing more than 25% body weight. So comparing these results to semaglutide, placebo adjusted weight loss with semaglutide 2.4 milligrams or the highest dose um, is 12 was 12.4 percent with one third of people losing more than 20 percent. With terzipatide placebo adjusted weight loss on the five milligrams, which is the lowest dose, was 11.9 percent weight loss with 30 percent of participants losing more than 20 percent or more. So the lowest dose of the terzipatide was comparable to the highest dose of the semaglutide, and percentages increased with the increasing dose 
of the terzipatine. So overall effectiveness of the weight loss medication um, measured in the percent change of total body weight. The oral medications generally are three to 8.6%. The Saxenda, 6.4%. Semaglutide, 12.4 to at least 20%. Their tozipatide, 15% to 25% and bariatric surgery is thought to be 25 to 30%. So the best option will be a decision between you and your doctor based on your medical history. However, it's important to consider cost as most insurances won't pay for weight loss medications. And hopefully this will change as the medications are becoming more effective and insurance will see the benefits of weight loss before a medical problem starts or as the treatment for many medical conditions. Also keep in mind, however, that if insurances do cover the medication, you will have to meet the criteria, which is a BMI of 30 or more or BMI of 27 with comorbidities like diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, or sleep apnea. Um, these criteria do not take into account your percent body fat. So what's the difference? So these people have the same BMI, which is calculated by weight in kilograms over height in meters squared. So the BMI only takes into account weight and height, not fat mass or fat free mass like muscle. Two people can have the same weight and height, but a completely different amount of fat mass. And it's this fat that leads to medical problems. Alternatively, I also see people with a BMI of 25 or 26, but they still have a percent body fat that is in the obese range. So for these people specifically, um, it's important to increase your muscle because that muscle will help burn a lot of that fat. But some of these medicines could potentially also be useful in certain individuals to help decrease that fat mass as that's where you have an increased risk of medical problems. So in summary, the World Health Organization estimates that 2 billion adults are overweight and 650 million are obese. Obesity can increase the chance of multiple health problems, including heart disease, stroke, diabetes, um, and even some cancers. The weight loss with medication or pharmacotherapy is finally getting to the effectiveness that you can see real change in weight loss and, and people are actually able to keep it off and help a lot of those medical problems.